Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fleckish channel. Military operations always require transport aircraft capable of supplying cargo efficiently and quickly. This is why new aircraft of this type are constantly being developed. always seeking to improve various aspects, such as cargo capacity or reduction in fuel consumption. An example of these aircraft is the Atlas A400M, developed by Airbus. To replace aging transport aircraft, such as the Transall C160, and the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. Different European countries needed aircraft with greater capacity for strategic and tactical airlift missions, including transporting heavy and oversized cargo, performing airdrops, and medical evacuation. That is why Airbus began developing the Atlas program in 2003, beginning its assembly in 2007 at its facilities in Seville. And completing the aircraft with its first flight in 2009. This A400M was part of the first 180 planes ordered by seven European countries, being delivered from 213 onwards. Airbus has factories located in different European countries that manufacture this enormous aircraft. These sites are responsible for creating specific components or sections of the aircraft to be later put together in a general assembly site. In Germany, skilled technicians and engineers work in the Bremen and Stade sites for the fuselage section, manufacturing and the pre-assembly process of the hydraulic, electrical, and flight control systems. Crucial components like the center wing boxes and the plane's radar and measuring systems are manufactured in the Nantes factory in France. With dedication, the workers at the Tablada facility in Spain focus on preparing the power plant, flap support fairings, and a horizontal tailplane. This facility also implements a digitalization environment, linking people and systems in an operational ecosystem to streamline production. Once each subassembly and component are manufactured, they are transported inside the giant Airbus Beluga carrier. which has an extraordinary carrying capacity and long-range capabilities to move large components like the wings and fuselage sections. These components are sent to the main assembly site in San Pablo, Spain, where various stations are responsible for assembling specific sections. At Station 72, a dedicated team of experts oversees the structural integration of the wings and the installation of the engine pylons. Advanced testing methods in Station 70 are employed to check for wing fuel leakage, detecting even the smallest irregularities.
With the fuselage assembled, the technicians mount the plane's four Europrop TP400 engines and the auxiliary power units. The avionics and digital systems are routed throughout the assembly, and the necessary software is installed and tested. With the plane assembled, its exterior is painted with the aircraft's livery markings and protective coatings expertly applied. Finally, the A400M makes its first flight after completion, showcasing its robust structure, advanced avionics, and powerful engines. When the A400M begins an operation, whether in real missions or during exercises, such as Mobility Guardian, the same preparation procedures are carried out before takeoff. The mission overview, including the objectives and instruments used, is specified during the mission briefings. With such information, the crew is prepared for the possible conditions that might be ahead during the flight. If cargo must be transported, it is distributed inside the plane depending on the type of weight of the load to ensure proper weight distribution. After the pre-flight inspections on the landing gear, control surfaces, and engines, the plane is taxied onto the runway. Here, the pilots check with the air traffic control to ensure they have the final takeoff clearance. Thanks to its design and the capacity of its engines, the A400M can perform steep angle takeoffs. Its four Europrop engines can produce approximately 1,100 shaft horsepower, giving the necessary thrust to achieve those climb rates. This plane can create more lift at lower speeds by combining high lift devices, like the leading edge slats and trailing edge flats. This helps the A400M to take off in short runways or unprepared airstrips, which is ideal for the tactical capability of this aircraft. During the preparation of aircraft, such as the A400M, even during moments such as assembly or maintenance, technicians seek to implement tools that make it easier for them to carry out these procedures, ensuring greater speed and precision in their results. Of these tools, there is the electrical hoist kit, developed by Airbus's ground support equipment team, which is used to install the engines on planes or test beds. This kit is designed to facilitate the precise and efficient handling and mounting of heavy aircraft engines. It comprises a ground power supply, a central control unit, and two rear and front electrical hoists. Such hoists are connected to the control box that is already pre-programmed with precise loads and characteristics for the entire Airbus fleet. Although Sweden was not a direct participant in the Cold War, the country is still renowned for maintaining its fleet of fighter jets in that period. In 1979, the Swedish aerospace and defense company Saab started developing a multi-role fighter jet that could obliterate both air and ground targets, as well as provide surveillance. The outcome of these efforts was the JAS-39 Gripen, a Delta Wing and Canard configuration aircraft, which looked like something out of a science fiction movie. Mm -hmm. 
Despite being designed in the 1970s, the Gripen did not have its maiden flight until 1988, particularly due to an extensive testing and improvement process. Saab has partnered with multiple other companies to produce various components of the JAS-39 Gryphon, such as fuselage, wings, tail, landing gear, and weaponry. The process of assembling this aircraft is mind-blowing. Initially, various components are put together by hand at one or more facilities and shipped to a main plant for final assembly. these components are joined together to create the final aircraft. Later, the technicians integrate major systems with the aircraft, such as flight controls, navigation, communication, and sensor suites. Gripen was specifically designed to conduct missions in harsh environments and from dispersed air bases. It can be airborne right after the scramble signal, requiring only engine start and final automatic startup tests. The key to operational efficiency is to get fighters airborne when needed, which is why Gripen was designed in a way that maximizes its availability. The aircraft requires a road strip as long as 16 by 800 meters to operate. Hence, it can be deployed from extremely short runways, taxiways, and even highways. Moreover, the aircraft has been designed to have a minimum turnaround time. For instance, one technician and five conscript mechanics can complete an air-to-air -air combat setup, including refueling and rearming in less than 10 minutes. The Gripen is capable of performing a wide range of missions, including air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground attacks, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. The Gripen's unique delta-wing design and canards drastically improve its overall stability. Whereas its fly-by-wire control provides exceptional agility and maneuverability. Although Sweden primarily operates this aircraft, it is common for airmen from different allied nations to encounter the Gripen in flight. Aircraft manufacturing is a complex process that has faced several challenges, which have been overcome thanks to the work of engineers and technicians. This work can be seen at Boeing facilities, where the company takes advantage of its resources to manufacture its enormous fleet of airplanes. Within this process, building the fuselage is one of the central points in creating an aircraft. The company has undergone significant advancements in recent years, implementing automated systems as aiding tools for the factory workers. This includes the use of pairs of robots in the forward and aft sections. However, in recent years, the human component has still been the main focus, so the company has kept using robotics as a tool to enhance but not replace the work of the technicians. Once the main sub-assemblies have been built, one of the steps to continue involves the painting process. In places like the Everett facility, the factory has established an area dedicated to painting airplane wings, using the latest painting technology and automation. An example of this innovation is the automated spray method, where robots are used to apply multiple coats of paint with precision. This ensures consistency and good quality while not wasting paint. 
After drying the pieces, subassemblies would be finished to assemble the entire aircraft. These steps are followed for all Boeing models built to ensure consistency. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.